Hello, welcome to the September edition of Ask Sid. I, I enjoy coming to you and those that are watching on uh, Twitter or Facebook, uh, I'll be asking the questions that you've you've wanted to know about healing and some have wondered since I did a couple of segments on healing why I'm doing it again. It's because there are so many questions. I've been studying healing for over 40 years and I have some good news and some bad news. Uh, the good news is that with what you're going to learn and the increase of the presence of God that is coming on planet Earth you're going to do what Jesus prophesied. It is what he prophesied to you. You will do the same works that I have done and even greater. And at the age of the superstar, finished. The age of the superstar being in us, the hope of glory in every true believer, it's coming to the forefront right now. I mean, people, when you go to work, you're going to see someone sick. You're going to lay hands on them. They're going to get miraculously healed. And you can say, it's not me. It's the Messiah of the whole world, the Messiah of Israel, Jesus. He's the one that healed you. You should find out more about him because healing is okay here. But there's so much more he has for us here. There's so much more he has for us when we get promoted to heaven. And you must get to know him. That's evangelism 101 easy. The other ways, they're difficult. I like the easy way. Well, here's some of your questions. Crystal D asks, do you think spiritual warfare goes hand in hand with supernatural healing? I'm reminded of uh, a man that had one of the top healing ministries uh, by the name of Branham. And he had a unique gift. And his gift was one finger of his hand would vibrate if a demon was involved. The other finger would vibrate if it was an ordinary sickness. And uh, he had such gifts of the Spirit, he would know what was wrong with the person and the vibration would tell him whether it was completely demonic or it was a, uh, a physical condition. And then he would pray accordingly. Well, the same thing is true today. Some physical problems are demons. And if you go, don't go after the demon, you're never going to get healed. Others are a physical condition. And then you have to pray that you would be healed. So yes, spiritual warfare is very important in this because look, we got an enemy. We're not in a vacuum. And as long as we're here, there is an enemy, but he that's within us is greater than he that's within the world. Ginger B asks, why are some people healed and others are not? <laughs> If I knew the answer to that, I'd be God. <laughs> I can't answer that. But I will tell you this. I believe that there are many obstacles to healing. Uh, for instance, uh, and you probably know this, the biggest obstacle to healing is unforgiveness. But you know one of the second biggest obstacles to healing is unbelief. And a lot of believers are in unbelief, even though intellectually it's called a mental ascent. Intellectually, they know Jesus died for their diseases, but in their heart, they don't understand faith. They don't. And as a matter of fact, I have to tell you this, in my opinion, 99%, maybe higher, of spirit-filled, strong Christians do not understand faith. And it's so simple. You need help to get confused. And there's someone called the devil. That's his job, to confuse us. But I'll tell you what I did. And I've, I've done this for a few of my friends. What I have done is, as I read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, I find certain scriptures that trigger my faith that explain how faith operates, uh, that show uh, God's will is that we be healed. It's as much healing in the atonement as forgiveness of sin. And just pure scripture, I wrote the scriptures down. 
That was the first thing I did. Then the second thing that I did after I found these scriptures is I personalized them. Rather than make them general, I made them just for me. And then the third thing I did is I meditated on these scriptures. Now, if you meditate for the Jewish understanding, it literally means you mumble or mutter the Word of God. So I wrote these scriptures out, I personalized them, and then every day I say these scriptures. And the more I say it, the more it drops from mental ascent to my spirit. And I would urge everyone to do this. In fact, I'll tell you what, I put my personal list that I meditate on every day that I've been healed from on our web page. And if you go to our web, you can meditate on this. We'll give you a free download of the same scriptures that I use. Jerry M. asks, I've been asking for healing ever since I was injured and received healing on my knees. Well, praise God for that healing. But not my neck, back, or shoulder. Is there a point where we should stop praying and just live with it? No. Never, ever give up. This is what God says to you. That without faith, you cannot please Him. So why would you want to live your life in unbelief? If you give up, you're living your life in unbelief. I can tell you this. Your healing is this close to you. Uh, the kingdom of God is this close to you. It's within, even the Bible says. And it's a matter of a faith transaction. And all I can tell you is, I would rather live and die in faith, in the integrity of the Word of God, then I would ever, ever give up. Never give up. And by the way, this is God's Word, not mine. Through faith and patience, you will inherit the promises. Marley I asks, why are many miracles today not instantaneous or complete? like Jesus' miracles were. Well, we actually have examples in the New Testament uh, where he prayed more than once for an individual who was a blind person. Uh, and the second time he prayed, he could see. So I believe it's got to do with the degree of anointing we operate under. And as I said, the good news is, I mean, maybe by the time you even are watching this, that anointing is going to increase. There's going to be such a major explosion of God on planet Earth. Uh, I will tell you this. It, it's just it's something I hadn't thought of before. God is looking for people He can trust. That's all He's looking for. He's not looking for gifting. He's not looking for great speaking ability. He's looking for someone He can trust. And He says, if He can trust you in little things, He will trust you in big things. So your job description, be trustworthy. God's job de description is the timing. And I have to tell you, in my own life, looking back, if God had given me the gifts I have right now and I hadn't developed my character, it would have been dangerous for me and dangerous for other people. I see the wisdom of God in my life and trust God for His wisdom in your life. Don D. asks, would God ever heal an unbeliever as an example to other unbelievers? Oh, that's my favorite question. Do you know why? That's how I operate. I th actually, frankly, I think it's easier to get unbelievers healed than believers. Unbelievers are healed on my faith. Believers are healed on their faith, <laughs> you know? Um, and as a matter of fact, when I have my lectures on the supernatural around the world, it's filled, jam-packed with Jewish non-believers. And it's the most thrilling thing in the world for me to speak a word of knowledge and see a number of non-believers stand up and say, I've been healed. <laughs> it's wonderful. Purnell H. asks, is there a specific way I can pray in order to see miracles happen in my life 
sooner rather than later. The glory is coming, but it's only going to come on those that are hungering and thirsting for righteousness, that are walking in biblical holiness, that are meditating on God's promises, that are praying in tongues, that are passionate for Jesus, that are more passionate for Jesus than things, than sports, than money, uh, than in anything. Uh, this, this is where you must be positioned for what is about ready to happen. Uh, I, Andrea S. asks, can demons mic mimic sickness or injury on or within the body? Absolutely. And especially if you open the door. You have to be careful. You're careful. You don't want to say, uh, if a doctor says, well, your parents died at a young age. Did your parents, your grandparents have cancer? Did your parents or grandparents have diabetes? Did they have heart disease? You know, they always ask these questions, and the Bible says, if two or more agree touching any one thing, it'll be done, and you open yourself up for a spirit. A, a spirit, it's called in the Bible, a spirit of infirmity by agreeing with it. Well, your parents could have died from those spirits, but you're not going to die from that spirit because Jesus became a curse that you do not have to bear the penalty of the curse. It's that simple. But don't be in agreement. Not me. <laughs> that curse was paid. Look, perfect opportunity to start preaching. <laughs> Pradeep T. asks, does God heal people in the area of pornography, addiction, and negative emotions? Oh, keep watching. It's supernatural. <laughs> You'll see wonderful shows. People are healed of all the above. Look, there's no... Uh, j just understand the basis of the healing. Jesus took every single pain, emotional disorder, physical disorder, disease, sickness, everything, and he said, bring it on. And it all was on him. And his blood was poured out from when he was whipped and when he was crucified. And by his stripes, 1 Peter 2.24 says, by his stripes you were healed. That covers everything. Many people on uh, Facebook and uh, Twitter asked about what kind of healings I've seen and experienced. Uh, one person asked me about uh, have I ever seen gold teeth materialize? And I have to tell you the funniest story. She may be watching, but I'll risk it. Uh, I have a friend that went to a meeting that I was at, and someone shared about getting a gold tooth. Well, this person got a gold tooth, and she came up with her husband. And I knew both of them. And, you know, I'm an investigative reporter. And so I said to the husband, uh, and I said, are you sure your wife did not have a gold tooth before today? And he says, absolutely. I went to pay for it <laughs> because he's a bit of a tightwad. Uh, and I mean, it was so funny the way, the way they said this. But then the woman started praying for other people and they got gold teeth. Um, I, I have either interviewed someone or witnessed every miracle of the Bible. I have no problem with believing for miracles. And I'm going to tell you something else. As you watch our archives on our It's Supernatural television network, uh, we have people that watch it five, six hours a day. They watch every old archive, and the old archives are now done in high definition. And you know what? I operate in words and knowledge, and my guests do. People are getting healed on these archive shows. I think it's the best Bible school in the world, just looking at our archives. And my greatest desire is anything I can do, you can do better. Get my personal scriptures I meditate on on the web, sidroth.org, and you start meditating on those scriptures. And as a matter of fact, you know what you should do? You should send the link to every one of your friends on Facebook, every, every one of the people on your mailing list, because they all need this. And, and I'll tell you one last thought. If before you have a dread disease, you develop your faith muscle, you'll just flick it off. 
But when you have the dread disease, many people just get w worn out. They, you know, they get tired of fighting and they quit. Now is the time to be meditating on God's Word. I hope you've enjoyed this edition of Ask Sid.